How's it going? It is November the 18th and I thought it would be fun to come out and try to make a flower arrangement out of the garden. Now this is what the garden is currently looking like so this is going to be a challenge but I think it'll be fun. I make flower arrangements all the time but I usually don't film them. Um, it's something I'm really interested in and I love to do but I'm not a professional um, so it just hasn't been the focus but I thought that it would be fun to show you guys my process because it is a weird time of year. I mean I don't know if you guys can see but the grass is completely covered in frost right now. So I thought it would be fun to show you some of the things that I look for in the garden. And it doesn't have to be like a ton of stuff. Like you can get some flowers from the grocery store and then supplement with like some seed heads or something like that. But today I'm gonna challenge myself to only use stuff that comes out of my garden. So I gotta grab a couple of supplies out here in the barn first. I'm gonna grab my clippers, probably a pair of gloves. Right now my hands are just frozen. I'm actually doing this during Benjamin's nap time as well. We just put him down for his first nap. So I'm hoping to do all my gathering this morning and have it done by the time he wakes up and then I'll make the flower arrangement during his second nap this afternoon. It is a beautiful sunny day. There is no wind, which makes it very nice. So here's the first thing. This is a proud berry coral berry that I planted last year. Really beautiful berries for like to drape out of the side of a vase. Look at those rose hips. Some of my roses, you guys, I don't deadhead for the specific purpose of getting rose hips to use in arrangements. So there are the rose hips and I try to get as long a stem as possible. Uh, I could always cut more off if I need to, but I want some good strong vertical elements in this arrangement. So this is a Blue Chiffon Rosa Sharon standard that I planted out of one of my containers into the landscape this fall. And it's got some really pretty like, I don't know, are those seed heads or like buds that didn't open? I'm not really sure, they're really pretty though. So I'm gonna grab a couple of those. Here's a couple of stems of white yarrow. Still look pretty good. So I'm kind of behind the gazebo now where the pellet walkway is. And there's a juniper right here. And check this out. It's got some beautiful blueberries in it. So I'm gonna grab a couple of stems of that. I think that'll be really pretty. Bucket's already looking really pretty and full of color. Uh, but I do think I'm gonna grab a couple of these hydrangea blooms that have dried right on the shrub. I think those will look really pretty and very fallish. This is a huge drift of white roses, most of which look pretty bad because we've already been as low as 19 degrees Fahrenheit here. So it's affected most of the roses, but I'm hoping to find maybe a couple of buds that haven't been damaged. So we'll see, I'm gonna root around in there. So I actually found quite a few like decent looking things. So look at these buds. They've definitely been stressed by the cold uh, because they're more pink than white, which they're normally a lot brighter, but I actually think that's gonna look better for the arrangement. So I found a few of those, and then I just cut a couple of stems that have some new growth on them um, because the new growth looks like this really beautiful red, while the rest, like when you get further down, so see the new growth there, the red, when you get further down, it's more of a green. Um, and these really haven't started to turn fall color, and I can't remember that these particular varieties like color up really well or not. But I'm really happy with that. So I'm up by Versailles now, and there's a couple of things in this bed. So I've got Columbine here that came back really nice and fresh. I cut it back mid-season. And then I've got beautiful birch branches up here, and I might grab a couple of these because look at the, what are they called, catkins, I think. They're kind of crumbly a little bit, but I'm hoping to find some that aren't quite as quite quite as bad we don't want something that's going to do that in the arrangement but we'll see if I can find some ones that will hold up a little better I think that would be a gorgeous textural element I went and sat the birch branch up on the table where I'm going to be putting this together because it is a little bit crumbly uh, but I want to use it so bad I figure once it's in the arrangement and nobody's touching it it won't fall apart too bad <laughs> I think I'd like to grab a little bit of blue spruce as well as some red twig dogwood, which I have to climb in here to grab. Hmm, I wonder if I should grab one of those cabbage. I didn't even make it all the way around the garden, you guys, and I found all of these gorgeous things. So I did pop one of my ornamental cabbage out of the front flower beds because it was one that actually grew facing toward the back, so you really couldn't see it. Um, a few gold euonymus, it's beautiful. We've got the columbine, 
Jupiter's beard. There was a few stems that were kind of like growing onto the sidewalk that were protected from frost. All the rest of it was gone. I found a couple of salvias intermixed, like kind of tucked into the plants. We've got the evergreens, the rose hips, just a beautiful blend. Oh, and there's the birch branch. I think that is amazing for mid-November to be able to go out through your garden. I didn't even go through our whole garden. I thought I was gonna have to scrounge around a lot more than I actually did, and I picked way more than I need to for a regular arrangement. I just wanted to pull a bunch of stuff so you guys could see some options that this time of year still look good if you're having a more mild fall. Like we've been down to 19, like I said, but we haven't had layers of snow like some of you have already. But some of this stuff, even if you do have snow, the evergreens, the rose hips, the dried hydrangeas, a lot of that stuff stays nice even through the winter time. So if you don't have those kind of things in your garden and you like to do fresh flower arrangements, maybe think about planting some. And you can even supplement, like you can get grocery store flowers, I do it all the time, and then I'll run out to the garden and grab a couple evergreen branches and it just elevates something that could look, you know, like, oh, they bought that at the grocery store into something a little bit more unique. So I'm gonna actually set all of this up. I think Benjamin is still asleep, so I'm gonna go check on him, um, see where his nap is at, and I think I might be able to have time to put this together right now. Oh, yep, he's still asleep. So before I get started, I just wanted to show you all my supplies all laid out. So this is the vase that I'm going to be using. I do uh, think I'm gonna line it with plastic, just a really thick plastic, because I am not positive that it's watertight, and I just wanna make sure. I have some floral foam that I've already pre-soaked and there's a um, floral preservative already in it. This is what it is right here. This is the stuff that just comes with the fresh flowers at the grocery store and I have just like a stockpile of these from all the flowers I buy. And I put three, I think, no, I put two packets in this water. I've got a couple different pruners. I've got my Fiskars, um, like little trimmers. What are these, snips? Um, my Felcos for the bigger branches and then a knife to cut my foam to fit the vase. And then I just laid everything out again that I picked out of the garden. So there's most of it. And then I put the rose foliage over here because it's kind of thorny. So I asked Erin to come set up a couple cameras behind me so that we could just show you guys this arrangement coming together a little bit quicker. Um, I'm gonna try to stay behind the arrangement as much as possible so you can see all the detail, but I'm not that good. So I'm gonna probably be moving around it quite a bit. I'll try to not obstruct the view. done I think it turned out really pretty let me see if I can back up and give you guys a really good look at it and like I said the back doesn't have to look that great I did um, push the coral berries in there but I did made no attempts to hide the plastic um, just because you won't see it and it does look good from the side still so like you know if you happen to be close to the wall <laughs> you, you know you'll uh, see that there's still some pretty things but this was kind of like the main focus obviously i really hope you guys enjoyed this video just seeing what can come out of the garden so late in the season after it's been cold for so long in fact i'm kind of frozen right now like i can still see my breath and i'm ready to go inside um but i did uh make fresh cuts on everything right before i introduced it to the water there is floral preservative in the water already so that will help um with the longevity of the arrangement um i expect to get a long time out of this one because most everything in here they're good uh, for vases, good for cut flowers, uh, and a lot of the stuff like branches, hydrangeas, the rose hips, a lot of those things will dry and look beautiful or already are dry like the hydrangeas. 
The only thing I think I'm gonna have to pull out of the arrangement is maybe the Jupiter's beard, the red valerian right here. Um, there's three stems of that in there, but honestly, I don't think we'll even miss it once that starts to fade and I pop it out because there's so much going on in this arrangement. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it inspired you and we will see you in the next one. Bye.